Okay, so let's let's try a few different things. So we've got our subjects uh, in the frame at the moment. We've got um, meter manual mode are uh, showing me it's uh, minus 1.3, and when it's in the minus range, that says that the uh, exposure is going to be underexposed. However, because there's a lot of black in the image, I'm just going to use the histogram. So what I can see there is that the um, the dark tones are right at the edge of that um, image. I think that might be a, a reasonable picture. Uh, so I'm just going to... Even though it's uh, underexposed, I think the underexposing is, is going to be good for this because I think uh, there is a lot of, of black in the image and I don't want to... Uh, I want to keep that black, I don't want to have that uh, becoming a grey. Uh, at the moment the metering mode is on multimeter, multimetering. So let's change this around, so let's have center weighted metering. So it's going to choose the metering value based on uh, what's in the image, what's in the center of the image. So what I'm doing now is just taking a meter of the center of the image and you can see the manual meter saying minus one. As I move the center of the image to the skull uh, you can see that the manual meter readout uh, changes to zero, uh, zero value. So the metering value now is uh, based around that center. I'm just going to make sure it's in focus. It has good. Okay, so let's review those two images. So the last image I shot was uh, F8. Uh, at one fifteenth of a second with an ISO of 800 and the same for that one. Okay this time I'm going to choose spot metering and you can see that the value now is showing a plus 0.7 in the metered manual mode. If I move the, uh, because it's still on that spot metering, if I move the uh, camera up to a dark area of the image, it's now saying uh, it's going to be underexposed because it's uh, pointing to the, the black. So um, that's spot metering. Let's have a look here. So, uh, white balance. So this is um, should be set to auto white balance. Why well, I'm using natural daylight from the window. So let's try daylight as our white balance setting. So if I change that white balance to cloudy, you notice that the picture becomes slightly warmer uh, because the camera is compensating for the, uh, the colder color temperature. And let's just change that again to incandescent. So now we've got a, a blue cast because it's expecting more of a yellow light. And now we've got fluorescent cool light. Again. 
fluorescent day white. So this is fluorescent day, I presume it's day compensation bulbs. So a fluorescent bulb that has a daylight setting, or daylight bulb. daylight and the one above was day white. Okay. And we've got a flash option. So let's use the flash. Pop the flash up. Flash indicator is on, saying it's ready. So let's try. Okay, we've got a very um, bright image that time using that flash. So I want to adjust the flash value, I want to, to give out less power to light my subject. So I'm going to try the flash compensation. So here's the flash compensation function. Now I want less flash power, so I'm going to go towards the minus part of the scale. So I'm going to move it to minus two. And try that flash again. So that was with flash compensation of minus two, and that's with the normal flash. Let's have a look at, well let's have a look at this uh, function, remind ourselves what this does. It sets settings to optimize gradation, DRO that processes with one image, and auto HDR that superimposes several still images with varying exposure levels that are available. So DRO, D range optimizer, that's what DRO stands for. Okay, so that was with um, D range optimizer set to auto. Let's try. HDR auto. Now, what was interesting there was that um, I was pressing the camera and didn't actually remember the self timer setting. So, with drive mode, that's not available. So it's not available with auto HDR. 